Finally, I can get back to my own thing now. I don't have to worry about anyone- What did you just say, you little bitch? Ugh. Ah. Oh. Did you use my head as a tease for the colors nitpick? You bet you sweet bippy I did. Huh? Damn it, this is why I shouldn't let people collab with me. Ugh. So after Sonic Unleashed hit the picture, it was clear that Sonic still had a presence in the gaming industry. Not even 06 could take that away. But there was work that needed to be done. So it was time to try and bring this franchise back from the dead, and Sega started by delisting every Sonic game that was of a low score. Sonic 06, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, Sonic and the Black Knight, and even Sonic Unleashed. Though they erased Unleashed, they kept the boost formula, of course, to try and keep things rolling and set to work on the next Sonic game. Sonic Colors released exclusively on the Nintendo Wii. If I were to guess why the exclusivity, I'm thinking it's because of the overwhelming sales of Unleashed's Wii version, but most of all, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. That game was a huge success, both critically and commercially. So they made a Sonic game with Mario fans in mind to get the fans of Olympic Games into the new game. Which I guess explains the Wii's exclusivity, I just still wish it came to Xbox 360 and PS3. Another thing this game was set to change was the voice actors. I'm guessing that's because 4Kids went out of business shortly after Unleashed was released, so they probably had to get new voice actors, though they kept Mike Pollock, which is good, because he deserved a second chance after 06 and showing his true potential in Sonic Unleashed. Everyone else, though, got a new voice actor, and we'll get into those new voice actors very shortly. Okay, with all that said and done, is Sonic Colors a worthy sequel to Sonic Unleashed? Does it do anything better, worse? Do the new voice actors do a good job portraying the characters? Well, let's find out. Let's nitpick Sonic Colors for the Nintendo Wii. All right, let's jump in and whoa, whoa, whoa! No opening cutscene? Nothing? Just jump right in? Well, that's strange and different. Not bad or anything. It just caught me off guard. All right. Well, maybe we'll get something in stage two. Uh, no? What what kind of Sonic game is this? Okay, here we go. So Eggman has opened a space amusement park, and I'm kind of already having a problem with this. Didn't we just have this during Sonic Unleashed? Isn't this a little bit redundant? Sure, the tone of the park has changed from the red and villainy nature of Eggman Land and Unleashed, but it's still a theme park after we just took one down at the end of the last game. I don't know. Whatever, let's move on. Eggman has made an amusement park up in space as a sense of remorse for his past transgressions. Still, Sonic doesn't buy it, so he goes up to investigate what he's really up to, and what he is up to is capturing this alien race known as Wisps, which has mystical powers Eggman wants to use for his own evil purpose. What's next for the story? Uh, yeah, that's kinda it for the story. It goes for a more simple get-to-the-point plot, which I don't mind, the problem here is that there are things I definitely do mind about it, but for that, we'll have to start with the voice acting. As stated before, the 4 kids cast has wholly been gutted except for Mike Pollock, which is still the voice of Eggman, and he does a great job, just as he did in Unleashed, except just a different tone to adjust for the story, which we'll get into in a moment. The new voice for Sonic and Tails are Roger Craig Smith and Kate Higgins. Now Kate Higgins, she sounds kind of the same as the 4Kids actor, just deeper this time around. So thank god they didn't revert back to making Tails sound like a baby again. Excuse me! This place would make a great vacation spot! Yeah! Alright! But Roger... Roger, 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 Roger... Now I want it to be known that during this nitpicking the Sonic the Hedgehog series, if you haven't realized it yet or this is your first video, first off, welcome to the fray. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button for me, thanks. That when I look at these games, I try to look at them as is. I do not compare to what has recently been released. So to be fair to this game, when I say what I am about to say here, this applies only to colors for this moment. Roger Craig Smith is a terrible Sonic. What kind of college kid dropout did they get for Roger to do in this game? He sounds like a drunk Jason Griffith. And you know what? Maybe that is the storyline. Who knows? It would explain the other shit I'm about to mention in a minute. Oh man! 
That was crazy! Because Eggman plus secretly built amusement park equals evil plot for us to foil. I did a little shopping, grabbed a bite to eat, and trashed a giant killer robot. You missed the BBBE. Snap out of it, dude! The voice is so unnecessarily deep but also nasally at the same time, making him sound like a drunk college student showing up for a class presentation and keeps telling low par jokes. And low par jokes he indeed tells because for some unexplainable reason, Sonic Team got a new writing team. The writers of Happy Tree Friends, mainly head by Ken Pontak, were the ones that wrote this game. And this is why Sonic Colors is lighter in tone, because critics were complaining that Sonic stories were too edgy and serious for a blue hedgehog running around collecting rings, and I know this because SOME PEOPLE CAN'T HELP BUT REMIND ME! I'm pretty sure that most people, like me, are thoroughly sick and tired of modern Sonic. There's no, I do not wish to play as a werewolf version of Sonic, thank you very much. And then there's... For now, though, we don't need any other embarrassments from Sonic's past clawing their way out of the Phantom Zone. Human girl that he made out with that one time. Yes, Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic 06, and Sonic Unleashed did have some elements that didn't fit the franchise all too much. The Werehog, Mephilus, Shadow the Hedgehog. But you see, those games weren't too edgy, they were just poorly written. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were going for a more serious plot, and those work fine and were highly rated games by both fans and critics. So don't try to tell me that Sonic is too serious just because of a couple of bad apples in the rough, because those stories had character and dedication behind it. What does this game have? A college dumbass who tries to appeal to children just for the sake of appealing to children. Because that always goes well. Sonic laughs. Sonic doesn't laugh. Minus that one time, but that time didn't exist. But Sonic chuckles. He doesn't laugh. Yeah, let's go to an amusement park or something. Alright, but uh, one that's, you know, less evil than this one. <laughs> So with this game trying so hard to appeal to children, what do kids like? Jokes. And Sonic Colors is a prime candidate for the most stretched out jokes I've ever had the witness of hearing, and I have two examples to show you today. We have this one where Eggman says nobody will stop his evil plan, and then Sonic comes in and makes a witty remark. Who are you calling nothing? Okay, suitable remark. Good sense of character. And what do they do? They explain the joke! <gasps> Since the boss said nothing will stop me, and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. Rule of humor, you never explain the joke. But to make it even worse, Sonic replies, Great! I thought nobody would get that! And then, just when the joke feels like it's finally gonna wear off, the joke was over an hour ago! But I hear what you're saying. That's because they were trying to make Orbot look like an idiot. And though I still think it's unfunny and stretches for far too long, I'll give that the benefit of the doubt and say I misunderstood it. Okay, fair, fine. But this one has no excuses whatsoever. Hey, did somebody here order a clobbering? Are you sure? It says somebody ordered an extra large clobbering topped with everything. Okay, tell you what, I can't take this thing back, so I'll give you an extra large clobbering for nothing. Hope you're hungry. But some jokes aren't even funny to begin with. Like this one where Sonic mistakes the word wisps for lisps. From a race of beings called wisps. Wisps? No, wisps with a W. And then when being corrected, he just says he's going to call them aliens. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. First off, Don't it! second off, why? Wisps is not. Uh, why? Wisps is not that hard to say. If they picked something more of a tongue twister, then the joke would make sense, but here it doesn't, and it's painfully unfunny. And if I hear Baldy McNose hair one more McFucking time, I'm gonna McFucking shoot myself. However, I will admit that some jokes do indeed land, but it's the most subtle ones that don't treat you like a dumbass stupid kid and can understand humor. Like where Sonic is talking to a bunch of broken robot parts and Tails walks in on him, or another one where Cubot tells off Eggman. The about he hasn't stopped all of them they won um. and hey i'll admit i may absolutely hate sonic's voice and most of the things that comes out of his mouth but some things he doesn't say are winners 
like when he stretches and exercises before the boss fight. That made me chuckle a little bit. Then you also have some one-liners like, No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! Yeah. Yeah, you know what? He's right. I should be able to play Dynamite by Tayo Cruz if I want to in my videos. I shouldn't let some copyright law stop me. <sighs> anyway, so that's my take on the game story. I appreciate them trying to go more straightforward this time around for newcomers and take a break from the serious epic plot points of previous games. But what they missed was actually making the characters and dialogue likable which I think is this game's lowest downfall. Sonic has literally no edge. He lost all of it, and he's too scared to bring it back. God, I need to calm down because my head still hurts after Brittany hit me. I feel like I'm gonna pass out again. Ugh. So let's head into presentation now then. Now, obviously, we are on the Wii, so we have to keep that sense in mind that it won't be as powerful as an Xbox 360 game. And with that being said, I think this game looks wonderful for a Wii game, and it looks way better than Sonic Unleashed on Wii. Environments feel like just the right amount of complexity to get the most detail out of a 480p resolution, and upscale to 720p through emulation, my god, it looks great for the Wii console. Not to mention, I love all the background gags you can find, mainly during the stage selection screens, like this one robot who falls off a chocolate fountain. Mm. You are... Oh, wait, 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 there he goes, there he goes, hey! The only negative I have is that Sonic can look pretty dark during gameplay and not pop with the rest of the stage. In many areas, the camera can be so zoomed out to where you can't see obstacles or you can barely see Sonic. Like here, here's a snapshot. Where's Sonic? Go on, tell me. And keep in mind, this is in 720p. Imagine playing the game at its native 480p resolution. He would just be a dark blur. But you know me, gotta talk about that animation in the cutscenes. It's fine, pretty much a repeat of Unleash, but with less obvious motion capture. But the weird thing is, you can tell all of these cutscenes are in real time. Still, they are pre-rendered, which there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is that since they are pre-rendered in 480p, they look distractingly pixelated. It's not a deal breaker or anything, it's just very noticeable when you're playing on an emulator. Still, according to my friend, they said it's not very noticeable when playing on an actual Wii, and on Wii U? I have no fucking clue because he owns a Wii U. <laughs> but with the good presentation, you need good music. And oh boy, does Sonic Colors have a superb OST. Every track fitting in with each area with different variations depending on what act you're in. As per my style, let's go through a few of them. Tropical Resort, which does feel like you're running through an amusement park with a cool groovy track. You have Sweet Mountain. Starlight Carnival, which is definitely inspired by Starlight Zone in Sonic 1. And just two more, Aquarium Park, which is great because I am a big fan of water theme music and this delivers for me personally. And the rooftop run of Sonic Colors, fucking Asteroid Coaster. Mm.
Oh, but there's one more I have to mention because it's the main planet, so Planet Wisp might be the best track right after Asteroid Coaster. But then there's the vocal tracks, but of course I'll be leaving the ending theme until the end. But the main theme, Reach for the Stars, is just great. Not as good as Endless Possibility or any Crush 40 song, but pretty great still. Alright, now it's time for the gameplay. Continuing with the boost formula from Sonic Unleashed with thankfully no Sun and Moon medals, no Werehog, just Sonic, and the game is way better in that department. I can actually enjoy these stages without having to worry about zipping past a mandatory collectible, but there's a bit of a problem here, but let's start with controls first. They're a bit weird, but it's understandable why. The game was used with a wide variety of control schemes. Basically anything that could be used with the Wii could be used with this game, meaning they had to mainly design with the Wii Remote in mind, as that was the primary controller. But there's a side effect to this. All of the controls are simplified, like drifting, quick stepping, etc. are simplified so that you can only do it when the stage tells you to do it. And come to think of it, I think it actually affects the level design, but we'll get to that in a second. And they map the quick step to the analog stick, which just feels all sorts of wrong. The quick step isn't an analog control, so using it with an analog stick feels all sorts of wrong. It's like playing a 2D game with an analog stick. Now for the drift. This also sort of works the same as well, where you can only use it when the game tells you to, and not to mention I think the drift is worse here than in Sonic Unleashed. But let's get into my main problem with Sonic Colors. The level design. It's 100% not as good as Sonic Unleashed as levels were. It, and I'm talking about both versions here. They aren't bad, but there's nothing to them. Sure, they look pretty, but... Mm, that's it. The platforming is nothing to ride home about, the levels just have barely any challenge whatsoever, and some of these levels literally end in 30 seconds. I'm not joking. And this isn't even one or two levels. No, each world has one to two of these kinds of levels. One of these levels is going around in a circle and pressing a button, but, but they try to make it challenging. Not by obstacles or anything, no, just kind of stuffing it to the right of the camera to where you can barely see it. That's not challenging, that's just bullshit. But one reason why probably the levels are so short and probably have anything to them is that each world doesn't have one act. It doesn't even have three. It has six. Six acts per world. That's why these levels are so short. It's because they wanted the big number six to be in every act. And corners had to be cut somewhere with that big number. And see, the thing is that I'm certain levels would be better if they stitched some of them into three acts instead of six. These levels would feel way better if they did, but no, it's the definition of quantity over quality. But at least you have some new things to play with during the stages with the introduction of the Wisps. Yeah, these aliens aren't just for story, they are a thing in the game itself. And I compare them to Mario Power Ups, where you use them to get past obstacles and collect red rings, which we'll get into in a second. You have the White Wisps, which give you a boost instead of the rings this time, which is weird. That was most likely an attempt to limit the boost a bit, so you didn't use it as much. Whatever. The Laser Wisp, which can shoot a laser and fire you off to far areas. The Drill Wisp, which can drill you underground and can allow you to access secret areas and find hidden goodies. The Rocket Wisp, that reminds me a bit too much of that alien in Chicken Little and can lift you to higher areas. The Cube Wisp, that can turn blue rings into cubes so you can walk across them or vice versa. The Hover Wisp that can hover you to areas you can't reach and can also do the light speed dash, taking it away from Sonic's core moveset, cool. My personal favorite, the Frenzy Wisp that can just eat everything in your path and is just funny to watch. And finally, the Spikes Wisp that can allow you to scale walls using the spin dash. Now these Wisps do sound cool and work well, 
but for most of the game I didn't feel like the game used them to their potential for platforming because they introduced a lot of the fun ones at the end. I feel like they should have been used more for mandatory progression to make the levels feel more rewarding and full of variety, but they mainly only used them to get the new collectible in this game, the Red Rings. This is where I feel like most of your money is going into this game. After you play the main game with all the wisps unlocked, you now have a post-game journey to collect all the red rings in the game to get 100% completion, which does open up the game more, and I will admit, the few I collected during this video, I won't lie, were pretty fun to get when I got them, but here's the issue. I didn't buy a Sonic game to collect things. For that, I'll buy Mario. When I play a Sonic game, I want to go fast and use the tools necessary to do that as best I can. However, I could forgive that if the work I did to collect those red rings paid off, and does it? In my opinion, no, not really. So as you collect red rings, you unlock bonus stages in the game room, and the fact that these are bonus stages when the game itself has lackluster levels already pretty much explains these levels without really saying anything, now doesn't it? But your ultimate reward is supersonic. And yes, while it is cool, it doesn't do anything for me, I'm sorry. Why would I put all of this work into levels I already don't think much of in the first place to unlock basically the easy mode for an already easy game? It's just Sonic with an infinite boost and infinite invincibility, making the incredibly easy levels even easier. Meaning I'll just mess around with it for like 5 minutes and then put the game down. But hey, if this reward does mean something for you, then good, you found enjoyment in Sonic Colors, even though I unfortunately do... <clears throat> do, do, do not, ugh, ow, my head hurts again. All right, let's discuss bosses very quickly. They are some of the easiest boss fights in the franchise. The only thing making them difficult is sometimes the camera can be too far away for you to see anything, or the gimmick is just annoying. That, <clears throat> that, that's it. Ow. Oh, okay, just try to get through this, just try to get through this. Uh, Sonic Colors is a decent game. It just has some flaws in it. I just... I just... I just don't like. If... Maybe if it was put on another platform with some extra features, and maybe... Maybe I could give it another chance. Maybe I could... Maybe I could give it another... Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Oh, my head. Oh. Uh, huh? S -S Sonic Colors Ultimate P P PS4? Ultimate Digital Deluxe is out. I, yeah, yeah, I do. Oh. Let's nitpick Sonic Colors Ultimate. I was kind of scared leading up to the release of Sonic Colors Ultimate because of the reviews, and no, it wasn't just because every single review had to mention 06, we get it! But no, a lot of review copies were sent out, and some of them said that the game was extremely buggy. But the weird thing was that it was only content creators, not mainstream outlets. So now that I have early access thanks to the Digital Deluxe Edition, how was my experience on the PS4 version playing on the PS5? It was great! Now keep in mind, at the time of writing the script, it's still in early access, and if there was another patch, I will mention it here in a little while. We'll start with the glitches first and foremost before we get started. I had nothing but smooth sailing with only visual glitches happening to me and none of them being unplayable. The only glitches I encountered were when there were no lines in the overworld map, a couple of stutters here and there that I barely even noticed, this weird issue where the text fonts on the pause menu became smaller. For some reason after the final boss there was no transition to the final cutscene, but other than those it has been smooth sailing. And even on my post game journey I'm currently doing, I barely had any issues whatsoever. But there is only one criticism that seems to be consistent. The audio is awful. Some sound effects and music just flat out won't play. Yeah. 
the rainbow homing attack is way too loud and gets on your nerves really quick. Unless the issue gets fixed, I recommend you play the game at a low volume, which I already do because my E is a really sensitive. Another thing, there seems to be a noticeable amount of pop-in compared to the original, like Starlight Carnival with this section, pretty weird. And also the calling can react a bit too early sometimes as well. And this one consistent part in Starlight Carnival Act 3 where Sonic is always in the air. Don't know what that's about at all. But apparently a lot of people seem to be having more glitches than I personally am having. So Sega, make sure to pass these out, okay? Let's make this game playable for everyone, especially with the nice things I'm about to say about it later. But that's it on my part. Everything else has been smooth sailing for me at least. Let's discuss the cutscenes next. Yes, they are 4K upscaled, and honestly, they are fine. Yes, they could have been re-rendered, but whatever, it's fine. And they definitely look better upscaled than not at all. Now let's discuss what you're here for, the new lighting and graphics. And I am of the opinion that Sonic Colors Ultimate, 8 times out of 10, looks better than Sonic Colors on the Wii. Yes, some of that is due to the game being upscaled fidelity-wise, but the lighting looks great on most of the stages. Tropical Resort, and in my opinion Asteroid Coaster, can look rough at times, but everything else just looks fantastic. Starlight Carnival Interior, just look at all those popping colors and reflections. I think they look great compared to the original versions. The only complaint I have is sometimes the game can be a bit too dark, but it's not bad, it's mostly just fine. But prettier graphics are standard for remasters. What isn't standard though, is all the new stuff they added, which in my opinion, really helped me like this game and made me actually like Sonic Colors. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Therefore, making this version my preferred version. Sonic Colors Ultimate adds a bonus, a fully customizable Sonic, and this made the game so much better for me. Honestly, it really did. Let me explain. Around Eggman's amusement park, you will find these park tokens that you can use to access lagging menus, <coughs> but more importantly, you can use them to buy cosmetics for Sonic. This extends to gloves, shoes, auras, and boosts. Yes, these cosmetics are pretty basic, but really, if you were expecting cosmetics to be this deep in a remaster, then I'm sorry, you put that on yourself. The cosmetics are fine enough for me to just mess around with and wear. Sega, just saying, you need to have this in future Sonic games. It is a must. But see, why is this the reason why I like Sonic Colors Ultimate over the original? Well, as I said before, I felt as though the levels in Sonic Colors are designed around you getting the red rings and unlocking Super Sonic, which I could not give the slightest shit about, as I said. However, getting blue gloves for Sonic, yes please, <laughs> this brings new life into the game for me, because it actually gives me a reason to explore these levels like they were meant to, and while I'm still of the opinion that shouldn't be because it's Sonic, at least it's fun to collect this time, and therefore I am more okay with collecting them. And at least it isn't as stupid as playing a beat-em-up. I got some really sick stuff, like this movie boost based off the Sonic movie that was released in 2020 you get with pre-orders, and as a fan of that movie, along with the boost, this looks sick, and I love it. But I didn't just get a digital pre-order bonus. Towards the end of the game, I got a fire aura. And tell me this doesn't look cool. Tell me. Again, just saying, Sonic Team, make sure this is part of the next game and make it better because I will get wetter than Aquarium Park if the next Sonic game has worthwhile collectible cosmetics. <laughs> they also added a new Wisp that was introduced in Team Sonic Racing. The Jade Wisp, which is a ghost that can go through walls, keeping the game fresh and new for old players, and it even made some parts of the game faster paced. Like this one part in Starlight Carnival where you have to go up and get the red ring, then try to get yourself on the yellow spring. Well, they put the Jade Wisp there so you can go right to the goal and don't have to worry about it. Another new thing added gameplay-wise that has received a lot of criticism is the new Tail Save. Now this didn't really bother me during my playthrough, in fact sometimes it didn't even work. So good! The main thing it helped me out on was the post-game red ring hunt and just made the whole collecting less tedious so for me, I actually like it during that. But they should have had an option to turn it off because it really does make the game even easier than it already was. But now the part I had to do because I have to save my console from getting hacked, the rival races. These are so much better than I was expecting. These do not mess around, you have to platform perfectly because if you mess up, even if you don't die, you basically lose. They are not impossible, but boy are they strict to do. My tip is learn those shortcuts. You will need them. My only complaint is that there's only one per world, which is pretty disappointing. They, these were so fun, I just wanted to play more of them. I also recommend adding stuff like this in the next Sonic game and make it multiplayer. Yes, I did it! 
Eat it, metal. <laughs> Alright, now with my console saved, let's finish Sonic Colors through Sonic Colors Ultimate. So after stopping all of the generators, thus saving all of the aliens, Sonic and the Wisps celebrate, but Eggman deems he will have the last laugh. But his plan backfires that causes the amusement park to explode, so we have to hurry with terminal velocity to take the elevator back down to Earth. Ow. 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 We make it to the elevator, but Eggman meets us there. Sonic pushes Tails in and says to stop Eggman once and for all. And the boss is pretty easy as long as you know what you're doing and ready to do some quick stepping. Just keep in mind to use the momentum of your double jumps to get past these spikes. The game doesn't really tell you about that, so here I am telling you. Of course, the final boss theme is amazing, but do I really have to tell you that at this point? <laughs> Grab all the wisps, then use your power to send Eggman into space, with the final cutscene ending off on Sonic and Yakker's goodbye, and they all go back to their worlds, ending Sonic Colors. Time for the verdict. The original game in my opinion, I don't like it very much. Still, Sonic Colors Ultimate I definitely prefer just for the customizables, that tickles my fancy a lot. Though I still don't think a Sonic game should be about collecting things, however this game just added a lot of stuff I do want to see in future Sonic games. I think this is what Sonic games need now, it's just good bonus features to help out with that replayability. Not only make a game that's challenging, but give players a reason to keep playing the game and trying new things. Whether that's through collectibles, cosmetics, rival races, or anything really. So I'll say Sonic Colors Ultimate is a good version. Proceed with caution in case you run into any glitches, and unless some things change at the time of this video's release, don't go anywhere near the Switch version, or play it and just see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. But as long as yours doesn't glitch, I definitely recommend this version. Well, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll have some more videos ready. Thankfully not Sonic, because we're going to be taking a break from him. The two upcoming videos will be ready soon. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.